In this video, I'll show you how to safely blank off a disused electrical outlet or connection unit, providing that it has its own switch on your breaker panel that you can turn off. All you need is a tester pen, a screwdriver, a blanking plate, and a connector block. This video is for educational purposes only, and copying anything in this video is done so at your own risk. In my case, I'll be working on this fuse spur that used to feed an old immersion heater. As you can see, this spur has a faint light showing when the switch is on, if your outlet doesn't have a light, then you can use a tester pen to check if it's live when the switch is in the on position. Either way, the first thing to do is to check if there is a specific switch for this on your breaker panel, and if so, turn it off to isolate the circuit. My panel has a switch labeled old immersion, so I switched that off and went back to check on the spur, and the LED no longer lights up, indicating that it's now isolated. Next, I removed the screws holding it in place to the back box, and then remove the three internal screws that are holding each of the wires to the fuse spur. Here's the blanking plate and connector block that I'll be using. First thing to do is cut the connector block so that you have a block of three terminals. These are normally used to join wires, hence they have two screws per terminal, but for this job you only need one screw for each wire to ensure that they stay separated to prevent arcing. There are other types of connectors you can use, but these remain the cheapest way to safely and correctly blank off the box. As shown already, this should be isolated now, but as I need to straighten out the wires a bit to get them in the connector block, it's always a good idea to test the live wire first with some kind of testing device to ensure it's totally safe to work on with your hands. This live wire is red, meaning it's from before 2004, as I'm in the UK, but since 2004, all live wires in the UK are now brown. So double checking that live, I then straighten the wires a bit, and though you can't see well from this angle, I'm leaving the exposed part of the earth wire bent back on itself, like how I found it, because it's a narrower gauge of wire, and keeping it bent back like that will ensure a tighter fit to the connector block. Because of the shortness of the wires, I'm attaching them in the order that they came out of the twin and earth cable, with the earth in the center. But if you have more slack, then you can use the more conventional live earth neutral order, though it's not a requirement. The important thing is that they're all isolated and securely screwed in place to their respective terminal. So make sure that you give them all a firm pull once they're screwed in to verify that. You can then push it firmly inside the back box where it needs to sit away from the two lugs that the screws will go into either side. Before I screwed my blanking plate on though, I realized that the area around the box could do with a little touch of a paint. So I gave it one quick coat of the Landlord Special. As you can see, it did a really beautiful job there. Then with the paint still wet and a bit smudged, I screwed on the plate and then went ahead and popped on the caps to finish off the job. You should also update the label on your consumer unit by adding the word off or spare to the description in a printed form like so. And unless you're also blanking off the switch on your CU or disconnecting it entirely, which isn't something I'm gonna cover here, remember to keep the switch in the off position so that the outlet remains isolated. Feel free to correct me on anything in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more how-to videos from me, subscribe.